Good morning. It is good to come together in the name of God, in the understanding of the redeeming Son and the sustaining Spirit. We worship, we gather, we commune, and we experience God's presence in our lives as people of faith. So I welcome you this morning with love and respect for who you are, your diverse gifts, and your understanding of faith. Only a couple of announcements to share with you. Um, most are in the bulletin. There are lots of things coming up, clothing sales and Harvest Bazaar and workshops and Good Start breakfasts on September 2nd. There's many, many events coming that are part of our fellowship. But I would also like to read a thank you note that we received from uh, Cindy Hopper and Retrospect. Uh, as you know, there's our concerts on the commons on Friday nights here in Norris in the summer. And this last Friday night, the uh, weather was bad and they were looking for a place to go where they could continue that concert. And we opened up the doors of our church to them, which is the right and proper thing to do. And so here is a thank you note call that says, Dear friends, thank you so much for opening your doors to the community Friday evening for the concert. You, are, you were so generous to help us out at the last minute. Luckily, many people ventured out into the bad weather and were able to sit in the comfort of your sanctuary. We had a wonderful time. Yours truly, Cindy Hopper, in retrospect, and that included a, uh, a very nice check of appreciation. And that is part of being a community, part of being a community church, and part of being connected with one another. I will simply invite you to look at the rest of this at your leisure, and I'll have some more things to share during our prayer time. You should also have a, an insert called Many Gifts, One Spirit, which is our opening hymn. Would you stand, please, for this wonderful hymn? <clears throat>
Let us join together in our call to worship. Blessed are the pure. Blessed are the souls that thirst for grace. Blessed are all whose hearts melt with mercy and love. We pray to you, O God, for hearts of deep understanding and mercy, and for spirits that soar and spiral in your grace and mercy. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to share with you a couple of thoughts about Psalm 18 before I actually read this psalm. Psalm 18 is a, is a pretty long psalm, and the first uh, 19 or so verses uh, are what I will be reading. And there's, there's some things about that that I think it's helpful, helpful to know. It's one of the things we need to remember about all the Psalms is that they carry the theology of the early uh, Jewish people of their faith. And they carry the music of the faith. They carry the liturgy of the faith. So when the people got together and they assembled a body as a synagogue, not only was there teaching within that synagogue, but there was singing and praise, usually found in the Psalms. And these Psalms were what they would oftentimes commit to memory. Not, not everyone would commit to memory the Torah or could certainly even read it, but they could remember songs, chants, and the words and the tunes for those. And within those are found the stories of and the theology of the people. So this particular psalm, these first 19 verses, is actually called a psalm of David. And you'll actually find almost this exact same, uh, these exact same verses in 2 Samuel. Uh, I think it's chapter 22, the exact same thing. And then there's portions of this in another psalm in the Bible. And this is a psalm that is praise, a psalm of praise because David is surrounded by his enemies. And so it's telling the story of David who is saved from his enemies by God. And at the beginning of this song, the first two verses is the longest listing of names for God, these epithets for God in the Bible. This kind of listing goes on. And it's as if the psalmist is trying to cover all the territory. The, these are the qualities of God, the psalmist is saying, and is giving us giving us this list. Some of the enemies that David is facing are just the enemies of chaos, uh, found in the waters of chaos. The cosmic, cosmic world is a hard world, and this is an enemy of David. The other enemies are the abode of the dead, and the abode of the dead is also an understanding of that dark region of one's soul and of one's spirit. And also is a reflection on, on individuals that kind of want to lead us into that darkness and are not people of the light. And so then in another verse, verse 6, he, he says, In my distress I call to the Lord. This is like a prayer 
for many of us when we are distressed, we're at the end of our rope, we don't know what to do, we're finding the world and life harsh and difficult, you call out to God. And that's what happens in this psalm. In my distress, I call out to the Lord. And what happens? We are heard. The psalm says the Lord hears us. The Lord listens to us. And then there's this amazing section of the psalm, which is very beautiful, poetic language called the theophany. And the theophany is God that appears in nature. And in this case, God that appears in the storm clouds and the wind and rages the power and the might of God is part of this theophany. And in no way, shape, or form do the Hebrew people think this is actually God, but this is how they are trying to understand the power and the presence of God. Just as the storm is powerful and present, these clouds are powerful and present, so is God like that. And God does deliver us and is our salvation. So listen for that poetry, listen for the cries of distress, and listen for the understanding of faith. But also part of the poetic understanding of Hebrew literature is what is called couplets. You say a phrase and then you repeat it, maybe a little bit differently, but it's repeated again. So for instance, in my distress I call upon the Lord, to my God I cried for help. They both say the same thing, but they're said a little bit differently. So you have that kind of language that goes through this uh, Hebrew poetry. So here is Psalm 118, verse 1 through 19. I hope, I hope you enjoy, enjoy this psalm. This is um, probably about 2,700 year, years old, by the way. So it's old, old writing, written originally, of course, translated into Greek, here translated into, into English. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. For the cords of death encompass me, the torrents of perdition assailed me, the cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, to my God I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. And then, then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering around him, his canopy thick, clouds dark with water. Out of the brightness before him there broke through his clouds hailstone and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and he routed them. And then the channels of the sea were seen and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high. He took me. He drew me out of mighty waters. He delivered me from my strong enemies and from those who hated me. They, they, they confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Psalm 18. He 
still and know that I'm with you. Be still and know that I am here. Be still. sleep just will not come. Remember all the words I've said. Be still and know I am. When you go through the valley and trouble Be still and know I am. Be still and know that I'm with you. Be still and know I am. Now I'd like to invite the children to come down for a time to share. A few of you are here. Come right up here, because I want to show you this quilt. Yeah, come right on up. Come over here so you can look at this carefully. Come right on over in front of this. Can you do that? Because every one of these little panels tells a story. There you go. That's good. It's all right. That's good. That's good. That's real good. See, now there's one, two, three. There's 12 different panels here. And this is a quilt that's put together. And 12 people made each one of these panels. And each one of these panels tells a Bible story. Now, I don't know if you can recognize some of them, but maybe you can. Here's the birth of Jesus right here. And right here, you see the camels with the wise men. This is the story of the wise men going to see Jesus. Oh, and here's a fishing net and a, a boat and fishermen. They're out fishing for a fish. Let's see. Oh, here's flames and a dove. This tells the story of Pentecost. So each one of these tells a story of the Bible. Now, if you were to read just one of these and say, oh, that's what the Bible is about, you would be wrong. You can't just read one story and say, oh, now I understand the Bible and I know the Bible. No, that would just give you that one little piece of it. You have to read all of these stories, and then you have to read more in order to get a to really know what the entire Bible is like. So they're quilted together 
because you take them all together. It's just kind of like looking at the congregation and looking at one person and saying, oh, now I know who the Norris Religious Fellowship is. You'd say, no, that's just one person. Or you'd look at you in Sunday school class and say, oh, now I know what Sunday school class is. And you'd say, nope, that's just one person. There's more of us. So I just wanted to share with you that just one doesn't tell the whole story. The story is told by all working together in unity and in conformity with one another. So let's have a prayer, shall we? Dear God, thank you for your stories, individual stories of faith. We take them together to see all of your love. Amen. Thank you so much.